Hey, the genuine, the genuine scholars. It's been a long day, so it's blue. Oh my goodness, I can't talk. But oh well, here's the deal. Had a little bit of trouble with that uh, map Google form. So if y'all want to regrade or just want to learn, because learning is cool, uh, pay attention. All right, first off, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at land claims in North America. And we've got a few claims. Obviously, this is the United States. Uh, that's what we have been focused on. This is after the Revolutionary War. It used to end right about here for our borders at the Appalachian Mountains. And then after the Revolutionary War, we went all the way out to the Mississippi. yippee ki -yay. Now, what we also have is this land in green. Who's that belong to? All oh, Spain. Wow, they own so much. Remember that? All that Columbus stuff? Yep, they still own basically all of North America. Well, so, okay, sorry, let me rephrase that. Almost all of the Americas, South, Central, and a good half chunk of North. Now, what we might notice is France used to own this. Well, remember French and Indian War? Yeah, we made them give it up, all that stuff. Uh, they'll come back though. Now, next thing, England, we kicked England out at the Revolutionary War. They're up here. They still kind of have some troops and stuff in here and they're messing with us in here in the Northwest Territory. That's not good. Now, uh, the next item is uh, French. Where the heck is the French? Oh my goodness, this tiny little thing down here? Napoleon's gonna hate that one. <laughs> Get it? That's Haiti. Uh, there's gonna be a slave revolt down there. Napoleon's gonna have these huge dreams of creating this brand new uh, refurbished, regenerated French empire. He wants to kick some butt because he's got all this stuff going on in Europe. And he figures once he takes over, he scares the poop out of everyone, including Spain. Remember, France is up here. Spain's down here. And he looks down and says, boo. And they say, OK, we surrender. Uh, I don't know how to say that in Spanish. It wasn't that dramatic. Uh, and then Napoleon basically just says, hey, brother, like to his brother, you take over. And he basically makes his own brother uh, the king slash emperor or uh, um, uh, sub-emperor, whatever, of, of Spain. Yada, yada, bing, bang. And then he says, hey, Spain. And they say, what? Uh, I want Louisiana back. Okay. And his brother signs off. Pretty interesting stuff. Anywho, uh, France ain't there in 1796. That's more like 18, let's just say 1800, 1801. We'll say that. Um, that's what's going on. The last thing we have to talk about, we talked about U.S. We talked about British Canada. We talked about Spain. Spanish territory. Uh, there's disputed territory. This is, we're in an argument with Spain. Uh, this is where an argument with Britain. This we're in an argument with Britain again. And no one really knows about it because it's way out in the middle of nowhere. And this is some just crazy stuff. We'll talk about that later. All right, so let's get right to it. So again, we're looking at all the territorial claims in North America. Moving on, because that's what it says in the title. You guys caught that, right? Okay, good. So moving on. Here's some big deals. We're surrounded on three sides. Uh, we don't have total control of the Mississippi River, even though that's our border. We share it with Spain. But the most important thing is they control New Orleans right there. So I made another video where um, I compared it to a bodily system. Things need to go out of your body. Uh, for America, we need to get all our farm goods. Anything out here west of the Appalachian Mountains, there's all these connections of rivers that kind of come into the Ohio River and other rivers flow into the Mississippi, and we want to get that stuff out here. I wonder if there's like some little thing that we could compare that to where everything goes out of. And so basically what we want to do is get all these farmers. You can't go over the mountains. That's a pain in the butt. It's so much cheaper and easier to float stuff on a river and get it on out and ship it to the rest of the world, make money, 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 dollar bills. However, Spain controls that last thing. And can you just imagine if someone could control your body and plug off that last thing where stuff has to get out of your body? That would be uncomfortable. And that's where America is. So, hopefully that wasn't too, never mind. If we go on, don't forget that arming terrorists is going on in this northwestern area because England still is a bitter ex of ours. Anywho, if we keep going on, what we want to talk about, oh, sorry guys. What we want to talk about is land claims. Obviously, Spain is the biggest kid on the block. Not the most powerful country in the world anymore. Uh, they're kind of fading, as I said. Napoleon's going to scare them. Uh, but they've got a huge territory. Uh, I would say next in size, well, come on now, use your thumb. U.S. is that big. British Canada is that big. It's like two of the United States. And then there's us. We got some pretty good land, but Canada's bigger than us. That's British Canada. It's purple. 
Uh, last thing, France is clearly in last place. The only thing they have in 1796 is that little tiny half an island. Remember, Napoleon's going to hate dealing with that. Okay. Now, on the other side, uh, who's got the smallest, biggest, Spain's the biggest, then British Canada, the British territory. Don't forget, Britain has stuff down here. So those are the two big guys. And then it's us in a clear third place, and, and France is in a distant fourth place. Other than that, well, we still have potential friends, but remember, we know how this goes. England doesn't like us. We, we trade with them, but they don't like us. They want to steal from us all the time. They've been uh, stopping our ships, harassing our merchants, and impressing our sailors. France has been doing the same thing. France is right down here. We know Napoleon's looking after that now. You guys wouldn't have known that at the time. But what we do know is what we just talked about, the quasi-war. Remember, we were just in a, an unofficial war with France. That didn't just go away. That's still, like, there's still angry feelings. We're not happy with France. We're not happy with England. And don't forget, on our border, Spain keeps messing with us because they can. We're a tiny little guy. I mean, we're not tiny, but we're weak. The big countries can kind of push us around. So as much as we have potential trading partners, we also have a lot of competition all around us. Anyone that's on your borders is competition. I think a famous politician would agree with me. Anyways, from there, what we want to talk about is, is there anyone else on this, on this map that would be there in real life but is not recognized here? Now, some of you guys want to say disputed. I've never heard of a country or a people known as disputed. Uh, maybe I'm reading the wrong books. Now, hmm, is there anyone that had been there, I don't know, maybe 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 years, but they just don't get credit because we tend to just keep pushing them off our land, and then we make the maps, and so that's why they're not represented. Yes, you know who I'm talking about. The Washington football team knows who I'm talking about. You guys can't forget who also lives there. Oh, someday I'll, someday I'll tell you about Zelda on the original Nintendo and how the maps worked on our old video games. Remind me someday. All right. So we talked about the people that aren't represented, and you guys can still figure that one out. The geographic advantages and disadvantage. Okay, well, let's talk about advantages. We know we've got the East Coast, and we've got awesome port cities, New York, uh, let's see, Philly's around here. They're connected by rivers of the coast, Charleston, Savannah, but also, let's see, Baltimore, somewhere up in here in Maryland, Boston, Massachusetts. So we've got great access out that way, but still, we've got a lot of farmers in the Western United States we can't really hop over mountains. It's much harder to get a cart over mountains. So let's see, how else can they do that? Well, they have those rivers, but remember, Spain can plug us up at any time. When Louis and when France takes over this Louisiana territory, they can plug us up at any time. And that is not good. Um, any other advantage? Let's see. Oh, we have all this land. That's an advantage. We can fill that up with people and farms and mining and uh, resource gathering and, you know, your everything that makes you powerful and rich. We can get there someday. That's a potential. Now, disadvantages, we're surrounded on all sides by possible enemies. That's not good. Especially if you're the little guy surrounded by big guys. That's not good. I know all about that. Uh, other than that, let's see. Having Spain or any other foreign country control the outlet valve down here at New Orleans, that's not good. Oh boy. And is there any other disadvantage? Let's see, let's see, let's see. I think that's pretty good. All right, so if we move on to the last bit, I, I think that's a, about it, all our advantages and disadvantages. Um, what would you do? If you're a president, what would you do? Uh, you might want to develop trade relationships so that we're, we could be a more valuable friend than a target. That's tough. You also might want to build up your military. Uh, maybe build a wall. Maybe build a giant wall to keep everyone out. I don't think that's I don't, just, just an idea. I don't know if it's a good one. That's what I got for you. Let's stop this thing. Study those up. Use those brains. Don't forget the things we've already learned. Don't forget your prior knowledge.